environment. It's an empowering environment. And I think most of you kind of have my background and or know a little bit about my background. I won't get into the long, long version of it. But I, I came from an environment that was directly opposite of it. I came from an environment where I was addicted to drugs, I was an alcoholic. And one of the first things that kind of led me on my path was going to 12-step meetings. And they really have the right idea. It's about people, places, and things. And it's the same here, too. I mean, think about it. Think about the people you spend time with. Your expectation is going to mirror them. And it's not because you're out to sabotage yourself. It's not because you don't want to grow. It's because we have this thing we want to belong. We want to stay connected. And what's going to happen is, if poor Deb, I'm going to pick on you, but if I'm talking with Deb, and Deb's living her life at lower standards than mine, what I'm going to do is, is I'm, going to, I'm going to either A, leave her, which is pain, because she's going to want to pull me back, not to bring me down, but she doesn't want to lose connection. I'm going to let her off the hook. I'm going to say, you know what, that's okay, that's dead being dead. Have you ever said that? That so-and-so being so-and-so, and we let them off the hook. We give them permission to violate standards that we hold for ourselves. But we say it's okay. It's okay that John cheats on his wife. It's no big deal. It's okay that Betty drives under the influence. You know, you got to, you know, and we vote, and, and, and we allow people, we make excuses, and next thing you know, eventually, who do we begin to make excuses for? Ourselves. We begin to let ourselves off the hook. I'm not here to say, this is your standard for your friends. Who am I to tell you what you should have in your life? But you do got to realize who you spend time with is who you become. And because of that, it works the other way, too. If you want to get good at anything, if you want to become successful at what you do, if you want to continue to grow, you have to create what we call E squared, create that empowering environment. And I, the first time I learned it, I studied martial arts. I have two black belts. I have a second degree in Tung Sudo and a first degree in Sinu Hapkido. And I was a, probably a green belt in Tung Sudo. And I, was hit, I hit that threshold where I wanted to quit. I wasn't getting the results that, that I, I really wanted. I, I started to, you know, cut back in classes, and I wasn't growing as much as I was before. And I realized that throwing my leg out wasn't a kick. It was just me throwing my leg out. And for me to kind of make a kick it hurt like hell, <laughs> right? And I wasn't sex cool as the 18-year-old kids. And, and, and it hit me that I had to change my approach. So I went up to the instructor, his name was George, and I had a little bit of a rapport with him, and George was friend of Tony Robbins. And if anybody doesn't know this, I was originally trained by Tony Robbins to be a coach for his organization. And I, I went up to, to George and said, George, no disrespect, sir, but you need to make some changes in your life, and I can help you. You need a coach, and I need someone to train me to become better at, be better at martial arts. So we made a deal. We created a barter. We networked. He was going to train me in sparring, and I was going to coach him. And we ended up having an amazing friendship from it. And really, the original training for me was I stand there, and he was like, like you know, six three, fast as anything. And really, for the first four or five months, was my training was, you know, I'll just go there once a week and get my butt kicked by him. <laughs> right? I felt no improvement. But here's what happened, because he was better than I was. He was a higher standard because he was a world champion, okay? He, because he was stronger and faster than me when I began sparring people my own weight, my own belt rank, guess what happened? I got better. I got better because I challenged myself. See, we all often set up a comfort versus growth. So we want to be people that we feel good around. You know, we want to feel people, we want to feel good being around people that we're better than. And we don't want to put ourselves in a situation, situation where we don't feel like we're enough. And to create the life that you want, the quickest way is you want that pressure. You want that, that external pressure that forces you, we call them guardrails, so you can stay on track. And here's a challenge. Where do you go and find it? Right, you go to a local bar? Now you don't want to go there. Everyone's going to tell the story of why this and that. Okay? Do you join a, a, a group? organization, they're not easy. There are not many out there. I think we've done a good job here at Get Life Coaching in many different you know, ways that people can get involved. We, we have a seminar called Breaking Through the Barrier, where anyone who attends Breaking Through the Barrier will meet these eligible for what we call leadership. You can come back into a volunteer position, but you're back in that environment 
just to participate. We have people that can get involved in helping with our team programs that we do. And there's different levels of commitment. And that's one of the reasons why I chose not to work for Tony Robbins, because I wanted to create an environment. I didn't want to like, help someone serve its purpose, even though it's an amazing purpose, but I wanted to create an environment that people can get involved at different levels. So you don't, you don't need a membership to sign up for it. That, you know, your membership is just your heart. And if you want to do more with it, you can do more with it, but you have that choice. And the challenge comes in, like I said, there's not many places out there that are empowering environments. Most of them are like disempowering environments. So the challenge comes in is to create it. If nothing's left, you have to create it. Because the alternative is, is you're going to bring up people that you're going to be equal at, or you're going to drift down to a level that's not going to be like your standards going to drop. And instead of working harder, you're going to work less. You're going to end up playing the Xbox till 3 o'clock in the morning, because that's what your buddy wants to do, versus, you know, working on your marketing plan, or working on your strategy, or doing something that gets you where you want to go. Because the only commodity that each individual is equal in is time, race, gender, beliefs, religion. There's no equality in this world, and there never will be. Okay, but the only thing we're all equal in is time. We all have 24 hours in a day. And what you do with those 24 hours is going to define your life. Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, okay, Dr. Martin Luther King, Gandhi, all these people had 24 hours a day. Charles Manson, 24 hours a day. Okay, stark comparison, but think about it, guys. Okay, it's what you choose to do with that. And being around an environment of people, who stimulates that and challenges you to get the most out of it in the direction that you want to go in, whatever that is for you, okay, whatever area of your life, I think is, is invaluable. So real quick, I'm going through five keys here. We call these the five pillars of E squared. Number one, join a team. If there's not a team created, that's what I did. Okay, we have an amazing team at Get Life Coaching. From the people who, who work the office, to people who support the seminars, you ever been to one of our seminars, the AV team, the trainers, the coaches, every aspect, I'm around amazing, amazing people. I'm very fortunate for that, but I've created that too. So join a team, find people playing at life at the level that you want and join them. If none exists, create yourself. Number two, feed your mind. I heard a quote once, it says, stand guard at the door of your mind. It's simple, if you don't put good stuff in, okay, the junk of life is gonna overflow your life. And it's not one-time application. It's an ongoing basis. So feed your mind. We live in a day where we, we have a, we were over in date with knowledge and information. We don't need more information. You want to grow your business, you don't need more information. We have too much information. You want to get healthy, come on. We don't need more information. We use that as an excuse. But we also got to make sure that we use that information and not just passively take it in or ignore it. Okay? How many times have you bought a book and didn't finish it? How many times have you bought a book that this is what I'm going to do? I'm going to get organized with my life. Yes, the ten ways to organize my life. I'm so excited. I'm going to go organize my life as soon as I get done reading this book. My life is going to be perfect. I'm going to put this book down right here and see what's on the TV set. Hmm. Where are those Doritos? I'll get to them. What's this book? I'll get to this book. Right? We get caught up. I'm going to bad people because life is going it's challenging. That's what we want. We get married, we have kids, we have businesses, we get commitments. It's not a bad thing, but we've got to understand we've got to wait against it. And then wait against the negativity of the world because it's just to leave, you know, I, I'm always, I'm, I don't know why you named it Facebook. You should just name it Bitch Book, right? <laughs> <laughs> because it seems like so much, that's what's on there. Everybody just complaining about their lives. And that's all you get. That's going to be your life. So make sure you feed the books online. And I'm not just saying like just stuff that we put out there, and, but a great thing that we do put out here, and Alan didn't even know, is we do a, 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 what we call Live Free. It's a, a video blog, for sake of a better word. So go to our website at getlifecoaching.com and just some good information, small doses. Is. Seven Day Challenge is really good. Book summaries. I love those book summaries. We get like two books in a short amount of time. Audible.com. I got my iPads, I got my, you know, my books on my, you know, from Kindle and all that. It's, it, it, you constantly feed your mind. 